back to the morning brew. Well, Tropical Storm Gonzalo has forced Tobago to be placed under Tropical Storm Watch, with the effects expected to hit the island on Saturday. According to the TNT Mad Service, will periods of heavy rain with thunderstorms accompanied by gusty winds in excess of 85 kilometers can be expected. The Tobago Emergency Management Agency has since said the island is ready, but what about Trinidad? Do the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management have sufficient resources available to respond to any eventualities that may be caused by this tropical storm? Well, Chief Executive Office of the ODPM, retired Major General Rodney Smart, joins us now for an update. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Bobita. Good morning to the viewing and listening public as well. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. So we know that this system is uh, expected to impact Tobago for the most part, but Trinidad may very well experience some uh, degree of showers and so forth. Is the ODPM ready to respond? Well, certainly. The, OD, the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management along with all the national agencies and the public sector agencies who we've been training with over the past two months. We are all ready to respond. And I just would like to, in, at this point in time, bring in Mr. Jerry David, the Senior Disaster Management Coordinator, who is at the level of local disaster management with the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government. And he's, on, he's with us on set this morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. David. Hi, good morning. Let's bring you into the discussion. Let's start with this. How uh, often has the ODPM and, and, and the relevant agencies been meeting to ensure that there is a plan in place? Uh, well, I know in the past we have met um, regularly but uh, since uh, Major General Smart has been there, we have been meeting very, very regularly in that we have had uh, simulation exercises. Uh, we have had um, all types of strategic meetings. And uh, it augurs well for disaster risk reduction in Trinidad. And uh, the, the country on the whole is in a better place today than it was uh, a year ago in terms of the response capabilities and also the personnel. Uh, we have gone even further at the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government in that we have, over the last month or so, we have been actually training uh, fire service officers in how to use chainsaws safely uh, because uh, we, are, we do it more than they do it every day. Uh, municipal corporations deal with cutting trees, for instance, and we know that one of the hazards of any type of uh, hydrometeorological event like a storm is that trees will fall across the highways, across the roadways, uh, and on top homes. So we saw that as, as important. So we did that training with them. It is ongoing. Uh, had, it been, had it not been for this particular incident that is likely to approach us, uh, we will be going today at another fire station. So we, we, we are getting prepared. And uh, it also means getting the communities prepared. Mr. David, now we know that uh, the regional corporations, uh, their disaster management units are the first responders in situations of flooding and so forth. But how when does the ODPM get involved? At what stage? Uh, I will let um, Major General Smart, the, the CEO, answer that. But I, but, I, but I can say that they have been involved even now in the, in, the, in the very planning stages because we are always talking, actually, myself particularly, and the ODPM speak every day, sometimes three times a day concerning all matters relating to disaster risk reduction. But the CEO of the ODPM, uh, he, can, he can chime in on this. Yes, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. David. So, Vita, my answer to that would be the ODPM is always involved. The ODPM, from the time something happens, begins to monitor it. In this instance, we have Tropical Storm Gonzalo, and we have been monitoring it with the Met Service 
from the time it left the coasts of Africa. So the ODPM doesn't have to wait for something to happen. We have a 24-7 methodology that we will always be looking at hazards that could impact Trinidad and Tobago. But you're probably speaking at the more local level of flooding. Right, yeah. One, you have a situation that overextends the capacity of the rural development, the corporations, and we call them the disaster management units at the major rural development and local government. Once they are overwhelmed, and when we say overwhelmed, it means that they have used the other units to assist a corporation, if, for example, the problem is in the corporation. If the problem is beyond one corporate, let's say it goes to five corporations, or in the case of Tobago, it impacts the whole of Tobago. The ODPM moves from the monitoring role to coordinating the national agencies. So it is once it has it, it, the situation, whether it is an earthquake, whether it is a flood incident, has moved to the point beyond the capacity of these agencies, the ODPM moved from monitoring to coordinating the national agencies. Now, Tropical Storm uh, Gonzalo developed during some interesting times, COVID-19 pandemic. Let's talk about the shelters available and 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 the pro health protocols that will be in place. Okay, well, that'll be mine. Uh, the municipal corporations, we, we manage the shelters. Uh, being very proactive, about six weeks ago, every municipal corporation's DMU, we asked them to conduct a simulation exercise, a COVID compliant shelter, so that they actually had to bring in bodies for individuals and simulate that this, sent, this, this particular shelter is being activated. So all the protocols, all the, all the um, COVID protocols were practiced. And uh, we have several of them. We shared it on social media. And uh, it meant that a shelter that had the capacity to hold 100 persons will be able now to only hold um, less than half of that number because of the physical distancing. It meant that uh, when the person uh, entered the shelter, they would have to be do the thermal scan and then they will be sent to the the wash area uh, they were asked to wear their mask and when they when they registered uh, if they were found to have a temperature then there was an assessment area we set up within the shelter a health assessment area where they will be uh, seen by the doctor and uh, the areas that are within the shelter itself, the, the dormitory area, the spacing, we would normally use like 40 square, 40 square feet. Uh, we had to increase it to almost uh, 100 now because of COVID-19. So we Does that put us at a disadvantage in terms of the number of shelters available? Yes, it would. Definitely it would. It means that um, we, our first um, port of call for shelters would be community centers, and then schools, and then churches. It means now that because of this, we would have to activate now the schools and the churches. We would have to increase the number. However, if we have a disaster, a storm, and people are pounding down the doors of the community centers to come in. Uh, we would have to let them in. Otherwise, they would break the doors down to come in, in a case like that. But um, as of now, we have set up the protocols. We have practiced the protocols, and that's important. Many times we, we say things, but we don't practice it. So every regional corporation has practiced this in simulation. So we know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. All right, well, as we look to wrap this interview, uh, Major General, 
Uh, Smart, I'm just going to give you the opportunity to let our citizens know what part they play in this situation. And how can we prepare ourselves? Right, and, and if you allow me first to advise Trinidad and Tobago that all the national agencies, NGOs who have practiced with us, as well as public sector, private, sorry, private sector agencies, we have been training for the past two months. And we are prepared to provide the necessary support to Trinidad and Tobago, and, as, and I will also say, and to Grenada as well, because Trinidad and Tobago has a responsibility for Grenada in the event something should happen there, Guyana and Suriname. But I will add that the best way we can prepare is if our citizens prepare themselves. So I'm calling on citizens this morning. We, you have been hearing our messages over the past month. We want you to prepare yourself. Look at the risk you have. Know your risk. Know your risk at home. Know your risk in your community. Come together. Strengthen that. Two, we would want to say to you, develop a plan. Develop a plan in case you have to evacuate to those same centers, those same shelters that Mr. David just spoke about. Three, act. Don't just have a, have a grab and go back. Be able to look at the grab and go back and see if there are things that need to be replaced because they probably expired. And the final thing I would want to say to Trinidad and Tobago, monitor, monitor, monitor. Look at what the med service is saying. Look at what the ODPM is saying. Look at the national agencies that provide you with information. This is not a time to get false information and be panicked. This is a time for us, just as we're dealing with COVID-19, for our country to be strong. And the strength of Trinidad and Tobago is in our citizens. So All thank right. you very much, Bobita, for having us this morning. Thank you so much, Mr. Smart and Mr. David, for joining us here on The Morning Brew. I'm sure our viewers appreciated that update. Well, it's now time for a commercial break. When we come back, we'll have more for you.